here we have a mid 20th century naive painting of some kittens drinking milk today i want to discuss a few different genres of art and how they may be related to this work so this is done in acrylic acrylic was invented invented around 1934 acrylic on old cardboard i love the backs of old works like this like naive pieces because it just gives you some clues about the provenance this is unsigned so i want to discuss a few genres of art. So this is naive. So what's naive art? So naive art is art that's created by an artist who is aware of the outside art world, yet lacks any professional or um, higher level training. They didn't go to an art conservatory. They didn't have. They don't have a you know a PhD in art painting or art theory or art history. They're just someone that, you know, does whatever they do throughout their life, and then they decide to paint. And this painting is, is the result of that. It's unsigned by the artist. So I, I would deem this piece a naive piece. It's good, but I mean, you know, it's not, it's, I can tell it's not done by someone that's got a PhD in, in, in painting, right? But that's okay, I like it. It's very collectible and valuable nonetheless. Now there's another genre that's similar and it's related. It's called primitiv primitiv primitivism. Pardon me. Primitivism is when a trained artist who does have that degree or background in, in trained classical fine arts. That's when they try to uh, attempt to create a work in a naive hand or in a naive genre, naive style. They try to go back and recreate the magic of the naive artist. And then we have outsider art. Outsider art <clears throat> is different. Outsider art is an artist who who is unaware of the outside art world. They're unaware of Picassos. They're unaware of Rembrandts. They're unaware of Monet. Yet they create art. This is the type of individual that's maybe an institutionalized or they have some very specific, uh, unique situation where they're isolated from the rest, from the outside of pop culture and things like that. So they may have some kind of mental challenge, uh, just some very unique situation where they're not aware of Picassos and the art they create reflects that. Uh, art dealers have found these ways, these terminology, these terms to, to categorize their art and art collectors need terminology. You can't just say, hey, I have some art. Only a bonehead would do that in the art world. So you have to say, you know, it's brutalist, it's it's naive, it's contemporary, whatever the piece is. How do you know what the, what the piece is? Well, you got to do your homework. You got to study art and do your homework. And, and just the more you look at various works, it'll be easier to categorize the genre. It's a, you know, it's an art, not a science. So, again, outsider art is a bit harder to to uh, provide provenance. You know, if I have a piece of art, how do I prove this is done by a person that was unaware of Picasso and they were maybe isolated their whole life? That's That you need to have, uh, you know, a story. Usually when someone uh, someone dies, uh, their, their estate is gone through and that's when this discovered they have, you know, 500 uh, outsider artworks or maybe they have, you know, prolific amounts of artwork that they've just never, they've never shared with anyone and it's discovered after their death. That's kind of like the gist of the outsider artwork. These are terms created by dealers, art dealers, to help collectors find what they love, which is okay. I get it. So I deem this a naive piece, mid 20th century. It's unsigned. It's gorgeous. It's on old timey um, cardboard. So hopefully that, that helps clarify a few of these genres: naive art, primitivism, and outsider art. Thanks for checking in.